this is going. <clears throat> And do we get any live questions or things like that? No. Oh, no? That was fun with Facebook. Uh, actually, no, in, in YouTube you do. Oh, you do? I like that. Now I get it. Like, all those folks that are like, uh, you know, like, hey, so-and-so, what up? Are we live right now? You're live right now. We're live? Yeah. Okay. All I, was, right. I was told to better project, so I'm going to give that a shot. <laughs> um, well, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Mark Holmes. I'm the head of Flixo Studios and co-founder, and I'm here with my... With my pal, colleague, and Flixos co-founder and CEO, Phil LeBlanc. How's it going? Uh, it's going well, Mark. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So we are... What's are, that? Are you excited about this? I'm very excited. I think Sorry, you can tell guys. by how I'm just, projecting my... I just we lost. are not live? No, I just lost the stream. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I, went, I went to turn on the chat. No, okay, we're live again. Live. We were? Yeah. Oh, you're no, doing... You're right. oh. There we go. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do. Are okay. Live we're live. We're, we're live doing, now? We're doing this live. Okay, we're doing it. Tell. All right, so take two. <laughs> so my name is Mark Holmes. I'm the head of Flixo Studios, co-founder. I'm here with my pal, colleague, uh, Phil LeBlanc, co-founder and CEO of Flixo. We're, we're, we're broadcasting live from our HQ in Toronto. And today, Phil, we are going to be talking about our top five, our top five Tuesdays. Do you want to give us a bit of a, uh, a little context on what the top five is and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about what is Flixo and what is our community all about? Yeah, so thanks, Mark. Of course. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, Flixel, if you're tuning in for the first time, we are the makers of Cinemagraph Pro, the award-winning design, award-winning app, and uh, it basically allows you to create cinemagraphs. Yep. And so today we are going to essentially review the best five cinemagraphs that were created right? in our platform. And it's a special week because it's the 100th week of the top five Tuesdays. So we've done 100 of these. 100. Can so you believe it? a little over, I guess, close to two years ago now, we started with the idea of let's celebrate the best that our community yep. is producing. On a weekly basis. And the way you get your cinemagraphs featured in the top five Tuesday is you have to upload to Flixel.com. So you create an account on Flixel and you upload to, mm. to our servers, and then we review these on a weekly basis. Right. And then we give our commentary and yeah, yeah. Uh, and the we feature, talk And the them. features are awesome, right? Because you know, as the head of Flixel Studios, we're always looking for new up and coming talent, so yeah. that gives a great showcase. Uh, we push the top five across all our social social platforms, which means what? A lot of other you know brands and potential clients can see these, right? We yes. have hundreds of thousands of followers across all our platforms. so. Uh, and really, you know, to Phil's point, we can't see them if you don't upload them, right? And right. now you guys do a lot of great work. Some some put them as private, some export them onto their onto their systems, their devices. But if you upload them, that's how we get to see them, and that's how your work gets to shine. And, and you're right. Hopefully, you know, some careers have, have taken off as a result of this, right? A absolutely. We've seen uh, Flixel artists uh, become full-time creators yep. for cinemagraphs absolutely and get hired by the best brands around the yeah, world yeah i think of the, and the Flexo studios that's hired, I've many hired of those. yeah the virgo hands the michelle molders the mario lachantes are all folks we've had the privilege of working with and 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 have made many many top five as a result of their work so without yeah. further ado let's jump right into it so okay. number five so all number right. five what do we have, have here phil a cinemagraph created by Sander Masik, mm. if I'm saying that well. Is he, from, uh, is he from Estonia? He is from Estonia. Cool. Uh, which Just like is Virgo. Just exactly. like Virgo. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, Sander joined the Flixel community a few months ago, but just started sharing his work to his Flixel gallery. Okay. And uh, this cinemagraph features his eight-month-old husky named Coco. So it's a little baby, sort of. I mean, it's, it's like a wolf dog, really. It's, it's a, a beautiful, it's a beautiful dog. I love huskies. Yes. Um, okay, so I mean, let's 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 do a quick sort of review of the shot. I mean, a lot of things are are, are, are unfolding very nicely here. I mean, first and foremost, you gotta you gotta compose these like a great photograph, right? If it's not a great photo, I don't really care what layers of animation you have on this. It's gonna fall short for me. So I think compositionally, this is looking really really strong. Um, I like the I like the color. I like the color treatment. It's not overdone. Uh, the lighting is very crisp. Very good. And lighting. in terms of in terms of the animation, it's got this sort of like little micro little delay on the loop, which is nice because it kind of provides us a little bit of a an, el an element of surprise, right? Like, yeah. you know, the husky sort of turns our way. And if you're a dog lover, then how can you not how can you not get sort of lured in and, and, and love this shot? So I think the loop from a bounce perspective is well done. It doesn't have this weird sort of yeah. jitter or stutter which we often see. And and again, when your loops are 
Uh, Aaron Paul says he's a dog lover. Awesome. Uh, John, thank you for the for those kind words. Um, and, and absolutely, when, when I see a lot of bouncers that have that jitter fill, I think you'll yeah. agree, it breaks the magic, right? You're, the whole point in these is to create as a seamless animation as possible, so it enhances the story you're trying to tell, and it doesn't break the magic. And I right. feel from a bounce perspective, this is really, really well done. So, so kudos, uh, Sander, for, for knocking it out of the park here. Phil, yeah, any I, thoughts, final I mean, thoughts? At the end of the day, you can do a bounce loop, and it still is a perfect loop. And this is yeah. an example where a bounce loop becomes a perfect loop. Yeah. And so, um, really great composition, as you said. So I, I don't have much more to add. Uh, I think that the model is great small. Yeah, it, you know, it's it a draws nice moment. you in. It's, it's a nice moment. It's well executed, and uh, you know, it's always hard to, to put an order yeah. into these top five. Yeah, but this uh, this is a uh, great cinema. Graph. Everyone's a winner, and I feel like I need to get a puppy. But let's <laughs> move on. Oh, this one's cool. I'm a fan. I'm, I, I love this one. This is this is our number four. Yeah. So I'll tee it up for you, and then and then you'll and you'll riff on this. So this is from uh, a, a, a Genf, who is a creator who's based in in Hong Kong. Uh, he's well known primarily for his food cityscapes and portrait cinemagraphs. And uh, this really cinemagraph shows a uh, his his friend, his buddy, making tea, which is a much more elaborate process than the way I do it at home. Uh, but I'm sure it's. Uh, it seems to be delicious. You don't and have that machine at home? No, no. I have, well, I have a smaller version of it. Yeah, yep. The IKEA version. Um, anyway, so let's. I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts on on this particular composition. I mean, the color seems interesting, and, and, and the loop here, the forward loop, I think, is is really brilliantly done. So, so what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, let's start with uh, the the loop. This, yeah. This is the perfect loop. So flowing, you you do not see where the break is. Uh, yeah. That is. Perfectly achieved, and this is a this is a forward loop, right? This so is a little different than the last one. Correct. Forward loop, which also same thing when it restarts, we get in trouble sometimes, right? A lot of artists. Yeah, and so from from that perspective, the technical aspect of this is brilliantly executed. Um, from a composition standpoint, it works. It could be a, a great photo. The the rules. It is third. a great photo. Exactly. It is a great photo. Yeah. And I, I think this is an example of you can take objects that have some motion and create something way more dynamic than if it was just, just a static still, image. Right, and, and I think, right, like we always think like, oh, cinemagraphs, I mean, we started in fashion. Yeah. You think, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's centric to a few particular categories, but this is a great example of this is almost like an industrial environment. Correct. And this is really trippy, this is really cool. And I think the other thing I'd like to just uh, point to this is what really makes a great, great cinemagraph is when you heighten, when you emphasize the contrast between what is moving and what is not, mm. when you have that so apparent, that tension is what really creates the magic. And, you know, here we have his colleague and his friend that's, you know, obviously, you know, working the machine completely still. I'm expecting him to move, right? But yeah. he's not. And so this is where, where, it's, where it's really interesting. And I have one question for you. What kind of tea do you think he's making? Green tea. Green tea? Yeah. Maybe. We'll have to ask him. Absolutely. All right. Any final final thoughts on this? Uh, the only thing I would add to this is uh, for the community out there that's that's watching this, there is so many things in motion in our daily lives. Yeah. And you don't have to be restricted to water, Correct. Uh, flowing hair, clouds, uh, clouds, uh, fire. Um, those are kind of they can be great, and we see them a lot. I feel like Earth, Wind, and Fire should have done a lot of cinematographs back in the day, but unfortunately, the technology was not available. But at the end of the day, there are so many things that you can do cinematographs yeah. from. Don't limit and yourself. Yeah. Exactly, and when you see something like this, it, it really makes makes it stand out. It's a great creative example of like yeah. think outside the box, and, and, and again, cinematographs have permeated every category, and here's a golden example of that. Right. Correct. Cool. Shall we move on? We shall. Number three. Okay, so I'll tee this one up again Yep. because I know you like this one. So Kopi Amiskua, which I hope I pronounced that correctly, so he's a freelance photographer based out of Me uh, Mexico City. Uh, so he works for a small agency, which clearly this, is, this, is, this leans towards commercial work. Uh, and his specialty is landscapes, although we are now looking at uh, obviously food and beverage. Uh, cinemagraph. So, out of the gate, what? Uh, why do you think this is strong? It's obviously our, our, our number three on the list. What do you like about this? Well, I, I think cinemagraphs we've now proven uh, from multiple case studies mm. how effective cinemagraphs are for the advertisement Absolutely. world. 
and Absolutely. you know increasing dwell time is, yep. is a key metric for yep. advertisers uh, increasing click-through rates all of that can be accomplished with a great cinemagraph and this is a great example of that if I look at this I am immediately drawn to the to the brand maestro I see the alcohol being poured but because the brand is just a little bit above. It's well placed, right? It, it's very it's well a nice, placed. It's, it's yeah, a nice and, and you're shooting from, from from above. above. It kind of gives you the perspective that you're the one pouring the alcohol. Yep. And at the same time, first person perspective, you yep. are engaged. It's very, it's well thought out. Yep. And from an advertisement standpoint, um, the key is always to direct the eyes towards what you want to be the focus. And yep. this achieves both. It achieves towards the alcohol, but it also achieves towards having the brand name just well, the actual, above. So the actual copy or call-in messaging, which yes. you don't really need it, you know, I mean, they probably had a, a call to action maybe in the, in the copy of the of the ad or whatever it was, but the fact that you can seamlessly, again, we talk about seamlessness, yep. a natural way of integrating messaging or communications within your ad, um, this is a great example. I mean, the way you highlight it makes, it makes a lot of sense, right? It doesn't feel like it's out of place. It feels very organic and ties into, like you're saying, the actual product being poured and you're enjoying it in the first person perspective. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I think it's a great shot. And number two. Number two. Okay. So I will uh, give a... You're going to tee this one up? Yes, and then Let's I want to hear your thoughts on this one. Okay. So Blue Stills is a creative duo who specializes in cinemagraphs. They kicked off their business in December. Where are they from? Do we know where they're from? Um, good question. I'm not 100% sure. Nope. Do we know? We, Everyone's we're, saying no, we're we not don't sure. know. Mark, so, keep going. So if uh, Blue Stills is uh, listening, please uh, put in your comments to say where you're from. Oh, your wife's calling. <laughs> and um, they kicked off their business in December, so new to the community. So new to the game. Wow. I mean, that's for a first one, that's kind of impressive. Absolutely. And uh, I'm not sure if it's their first one, but it's uh, sure. it's on the top five here. First public one. And one of the uh, first few. they are interested in, in product and portrait cinemagraphs. And so, yeah, let's talk okay. about what, what are your thoughts? There's, um, so I think, you know, whenever you're shooting, you're doing portraits, and so obviously you're dealing with, with human beings, yeah. uh, that can always be a little tricky. We've seen a lot of, you know, when you, when you apply motion on the actual subject, sometimes it can come off a little unnatural or eerie or creepy, which sometimes that can be played to your favor. I think of a campaign that we produced for uh, Bates Motel yes. uh, in A and E, which yes. you know, Psycho, with for yes, which was which was uh, rooted in the history of Psycho and yes. Hitchcock, yeah. and that was really Norman really, Bates. Norman Bates, yes, yeah, he's a creepy little kid, um, for a lot of a lot of reasons. So I urge you to watch the show; it's pretty cool, or watch the original Hitchcock stuff, which was really great. Psycho was a great film, um, but having said that. You know, there we decided to really play up on the creepiness, right? Like these sort of awkward motions and, you know, sort of unexpected movements. You know, was, the shots were all in black and white. And there we were sort of recreating a lot of the uh, the posters that were done for the psycho promos in the 60s, right? right. So, and, and I don't want to talk too much about it because I feel like we almost have to show it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, which would be actually kind of cool, guys. We're going to kind of segue and kind of write some references. Anyways, I, I digress. But uh, the point was that was obviously eerie and the intent was to be eerie. When you're trying, what we don't want to see is when you're trying to create a cool, you know, uh, at ease portrait. Lifestyle. Lifestyle, and that's the sentiment that comes yeah. off. That's a fail. That's what you want to try and avoid. So if I look at this shot, uh, it really it starts with, you know, the, 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 the shooter, the, the, you know, the cinemagraph creator, the flixographer, the wizard, really building a great rapport with the model. And, and in this case, you know, shooting cinemagraphs from a modeling perspective is very, very different, right? You're not using a shutter, you're not using strobes, so you've got, you're not in this rhythm of every frame you are in changing your positions. That's not what's ongoing, right? So you have to pre plan a lot, you have to be very comfortable, and I feel her comfort in the shot. I feel she's at ease, she's comfortable. Um, the movement she's doing is something that's natural. It's yeah. not out of place, it's not awkward. You know, it feels like she's comfortable, and that really is the sentiment that I'm getting. So in that pers from that perspective, it's a success, and that's why it's our number two. Um, I like the lighting, the mood is nice, mm. the color was well done, I like the little vignetting that's going on as well. So uh, I think from, from that perspective, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice execution. It feels natural, thus, in my book, this is, uh, this is a success. And I think her, her expression, too, is perfect, right? If you look at the expression, she conveys this, this sense of ease while yep. just flipping around with yep. her hair, which is, as I think you mentioned, something 
that a lot of people do. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a tick, it's a habit for many. So she's, you know, she, they're playing off something that is everyone can relate to. And again, like you said, lots of comfort. Yeah. She's at ease. You know, I even like how her knees come into the shot as well, right? Yes. It's a nice, it fills up the frame really nicely. She's slightly off center a little bit as well, not right, not dead center, which is nice too. And I like that even the, 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 the background texture too, that sort of, you know, the way the brown is leveraged, the wood, the wood panels are very nice. I like it. And the loop, it's a bounce loop. Yep. And it works. Again, a bounce loop can be a perfect loop. And in this case, we, we see it, we're mesmerized by it. Yeah. And you just, the dwell time on this one is I'm crazy. always it's mesmerized, just, by the way. Absolutely. Every day. All right, so that brings us to number one. Number one. So in the world of fashion, so I will tee this one up. Tee it up. So created by Jose Antonio, who is based in Ecuador. Mm. Uh, he has been part of the Flixel community for a few years, but recently uploading some beautiful portrait and food cinemagraphs. Uh, this particular shot is one in a series created for a fashion blog called The Style Ecuador, so in blogging world. And I think this, I think there's a lot going on here. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mark was part of America's Next Top Model uh, creative team for Cycle 20. Yep, so he produced, yep. he helped to produce uh, all of the cinemagraphs that were ongoing during that, that cycle. That's so true. in the world of fashion, I think you have a lot to contribute <laughs> to this particular cinemagraph. And I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. So. And again, I'll go back to some of the principles we talked on the last shot. Where when you're when you're dealing with models, and it's something that we encountered, um, that we encountered when we started working with Tyra and her team, was was you have to pre-plan this. You have yeah. to prepare creatively. You should have a bit of a guideline as to what's going to come to life. And and you, and you got to consider when we're doing this, we're doing about 14, 15 shots a day, right? Because at the beginning of the show, you just had so many contestants, and it's an elimination. Yep. So. We, we, we knew that we had, and some of these shots were done in outdoor sets, so you're fighting against the light, right? You're chasing the light. So we had to be very efficient. So planning, and, and obviously this was for a block, so there's a commercial aspect to this, you know, timing is of the essence. So really working with the models to sort of build your creative, pre-plan your, your, your poses. As we mentioned, it's not strobes. It's not, you know, there's, there's not a shutter that's going off, so you're not changing every single frame. You need to hold your pose. You need to be in control you know, of every single aspect of your body. And, and, and you know, someone who was obviously a master at this was, was Tyra, we did one episode. Yeah. Or we didn't do an episode, but we finished, we did a series, we did a one day shoot with her that we used for promotional pieces. And it was like watching a, a concert pianist well, at work. It was, it was, it was incredible. The, her understanding of the, the, the capture process, the workflow, where the light is, like, it, it was really incredible to see. So she was able to knock out 10, but that's obviously, you know, that doesn't go for everyone. But um, it, I, I have a funny story of you that do? too. Yeah, so before we started America's Next Top Model, Parenthesis. I had to fly to New York to uh, shoot yes, some of the promo, right. yes, and yes, I was yes, yes, the you one did as well. that's right. uh, helping to co-direct the cinemagraphs because the who photographer was, the photographer? It was, it was uh, Udo. 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 Yes, yep. who's a brilliant photographer, but it was the first time he was doing cinemagraphs. So yep. You know, obviously I was there to lend. Great fashion photographer based out of New York City. Absolutely. Great, great. And uh, I can tell you I exactly what you said yeah. it was as if you saw a, a master at work because yeah. she knew exactly what to do and even though it was i think the first time she was doing cinemagraphs on a professional shoot and she just but it goes to show it's also her understanding of photography her mom was a shooter she shoots as well like she shot the last episode most people don't know that but mm. she really understands the behind the camera work and it shows in her modeling so i think all this you know to sum up uh, your posing is critical. Working with the director is critical. So clearly, this was this was executed in a shot like this. You've got a lot of things going on in top model. We also try to prioritize primary movements versus secondary movements. Yes. Animations, and you've got a lot of this going on. So obviously, the focus being the clothing. It's a it's it's a fashion shoot. So you that know, would be the primary. In that's this. your exactly. That's your primary. You've got the dress. That's that's sort of you know the movement is unfolding very naturally. It's billowing. And the it's secondary cool. in this would be. Well, the secondary is it's more subtle animations. If you'll notice, there's a bit of water dropping, yes. which, uh, you know, could, could we have hit a little light there to, for her to come, come through a little better? Maybe, but at the same time, the point is that it is a subtlety, that, it, that you don't notice it out of the gate. So I think that was part of the intent. And as a viewer, you talk about, you know, dwell time increasing. That's sort of what happens, because you notice the dress, you notice the scarf, then you see your eye starts gazing. Well, now you notice the water, and mm. right now you're, and you're fully immersed in this experience. And now you've been watching this for 10, 15 seconds. So if I'm the fashion blogger, I'm going, well, success. These ads, <laughs> these visuals are doing what they're, 
what the, the intention was. So I love the movement on the dress. I mean, this was clearly shot, I think, mm, this looks like a 24 frame or 30 frame execution. Maybe maybe they, they bumped it a little higher, but it's it's nice. It could it's, be 60 because it's, I was gonna it's say, going maybe really... Maybe it's 60 and I feel like they maybe slowed it down, yeah. but, but it is nice. Um, the scarf is also a nice little flutter. So from a technical standpoint, they probably had from a you know, wind machine perspective, had maybe something from the bottom coming up, another one on the screen right or screen left. Um, and I like and I like the subtle motion of that water kind of coming in the background as, as an added layer, you know, to the story. Which again, the goal is to is to increase increase uh, dwell time and that balance of you know primary versus secondary has been well respected. So I think I think it's uh, it's a nice execution. Yeah, and I think the composition, the the model, everything works. Uh, it, it brings you into that setting. Uh, the teacups, every yeah. every detail is, is thought yeah. through. Uh, just like again, a great. A great, great still. Picture, you, a great need, you need to be it's thinking of... the same way from that point of view. You need to to think what will work as a great still, and then what can I add that will take it to the next level. And it, so I think what you're trying to say is you, you just got to tell a great story, right? Yes. And that starts with a, with a great foundation. If you tell a poor story, I, I don't think I don't care what medium you're using, mm -hmm. it's going to fall short. And uh, so I think that's well done. And I'm really, I'm, you know, I'm kind of jealous. I'd love to have a backyard that looks like that. <laughs> That's Absolutely. really, yeah, it's great. And um, and I think I'd go for some tea as well. A lot of tea in this uh, this week's top five. So I guess that wraps up our top five. That wraps so it remember, up. Yeah, how do, you, how do you get featured again? I think that's important to reemphasize. Yes, so the only way we can feature your work is if you upload it to your Flixel.com account. So please upload and we pick, we view all of them and we pick the, the best five every week. And in addition to being featured potentially for the top five, we also put, put the best works in the different galleries, so different categories. And we've seen a lot of our artists get work from the viewing of those, of those galleries. So I encourage everyone, it's a great free way to, to get some work and recognition. Great for your brand. I mean, again, uh, you know, as the, as the head here at Flixo Studios, we work with a lot of great artists. You know, the, the, again, I think we mentioned in the beginning, but the Mario Lachante is the, the Michelle Mulders, the yes. Ilva Ervals, like put your work out there. That's how we get to discover you. That's how we build a relationship. Sometimes other brands will reach out to you as a result of this. I mean, we're always enhancing our, our wizard team of wizards Absolutely. globally. Your work is stunning. We'll want to work with you. Um, and, and, and as many pictures of puppies as possible as well. We're big fans of puppies. So <laughs> keep those coming, okay? All right. Thank you very much.